Station, kid. Sue me. Hey, what the hell? You really shouldn't be on this boat, land, kid. Go home, kid. Stay away from this next time you don't get to walk away. A lot of people don't feel safe in Dandy Town with the rise of crime on the streets. When are we going to see real action against these threats? We're doing everything in our power to combat the increase in violence. We're increasing patrols and the number of armed officers. And what do you say to the criticisms that these are attacking the symptoms, not the cause of the problem? Mrs Burns, was it? Fiona Ferns, yes. We take all reports very seriously and continue looking into the cause of all crimes reported to us. With this criminal activity being linked to the heavy mob, can we see police action taken against them? There is no evidence to suggest that the heavy mob or any other group is involved in this criminal activity. We're basing our investigations on evidence, not rumours and hearsay. But with the scale of recent events, how else can the police... This interview is over. How do you respond that the heavy mob has got people working within the police force? Interview's over. What are you doing here, Detective? I wanted to talk, Chief. It's about the heavy mob lead we've been following. What's the problem? We can't pursue this, Chief. It's just pointed to the wrong people. Nobody's above the law, Detective. We've been over this. Yeah, but once the only way forward is to take on Eddie, the, the gen, directly, things don't look too good. You know how much sway he has in the mayor's office. And unfortunately, the police force. So you suggest we just do nothing? I'm saying there's nothing we can do. This town's falling apart. I don't know how much longer I can pretend it's not a lost cause. Come on, we've got work to be done. I'll be right in. I just need to make a call. All right. It's me. I've got. I think I've got O'Reilly off the case. Good. And he still can't connect it to me. As far as he's concerned, Eddie's still at the top. Glad to hear it, Detective. Just make sure he stays away. The fire has been started. Yes, General. Cousin Sharp, before getting a milkshake. I was thirsty. So thirsty you can't wait ten minutes. Yeah. Didn't you even get me one? You can have some of mine. A flavour? No. Oh, no, you know I'm... Oh, uh, yeah, allergic. Who's allergic to bananas, anyway? I am. <sighs> They're good for you. Look, all I know is I had one as a kid. Yeah, and you nearly died. I know, it was so terrifying. How do you know you can just choke or something? Well, maybe I did, but I'd rather trust a doctor who says I had an allergic reaction than my cousin who's saying maybe I just choked. Well, it's your loss. So, how's college going? Oh, not bad. Classes I've been to are all right. Are you still skipping classes? Sometimes. Why? I can't 
sometimes I just can't make myself face everything. Oh, I don't need a lecture from you, Sam. You've got no idea what it's been like for me since, since the fire. Eric, I know things have been hard for you, but I know it feels like you've lost a family. But you have to know your real family is still here for you. Yeah, but they're not, Samantha. I never even knew my real family. I was raised in that orphanage. I grew up with the kids in there. They were my life before I was adopted. And now, because of Eddie the gent and the heavy mop. You don't know it was that. Yes, I do. Everyone does. I'm just too scared to say anything or do anything. It's the problem with this town. Eric, I know you've been through a lot. But you can't let that hold you back. That's just admitting defeat. You, you need to find a way to move past this. I mean, everyone has the potential to do great things. It's just locked away inside you. You need to, you need to find the right key to, to let it out or something. Yeah, well, right now I don't feel like there's anything locked up inside me. I feel empty, Samantha. So, thanks for the speech, but it's wasted on me. A million defeat is all that's left for me to do. Come on, cuz, snap out of it. Oh, Maurice, how good to see you. Hi, Eddie. So, how is our little operation going? The guys are already all over town. They're just waiting for the next set of orders. Good. There are no problems, then. The police are keeping their distance. The biggest problem we had was a kid poking his nose around where the orphanage used to be. Poking his nose around? It was a kid, Eddie. We hit him. He ran away. Well, then, it sounds like everything is ready for the general's arrival. General is coming here? Of course he is. When? Word from the weatherman is he's on his way as we speak. Everything is proceeding as planned. He really? Is he really as bad as they say he is? The man is raising an army to topple the country that betrayed him, Maurice. I don't think you should ask if he's as bad as they say he is. I've been in the orphanage for so long, it, it felt like home, but now that it's gone, I just I can't stop thinking about where I really come from, who I really am. I've got no way of tracing my biological parents. I've had two surnames in my life and neither of them were theirs. I can't ever find them, I can't ever know why they abandoned me. Having no history like that makes me feel weak, Sam. Like I'm alone. I'm tired of being the weak one. You're not weak, cuz. And you're not alone, okay? Yeah. For sure. And as for who you are, you're Eric Twin. And you have a loving family and a great home on Acacia Road. Don't ever forget that. Anyway, I'm supposed to be meeting my friend in a bit, so do you want to come with? I uh, might catch up with you later. Thank you.
I have waited long for this moment, Eric. Who are you? My name is Crow. I was sent here to watch over you, to protect you. And who am I? You are the son of a long lost planet, Eric. I... I come from another planet. Your ancestors did. But their home planet was destroyed in a long, bitter war, and its people fled to the stars. Your parents took refuge on this Earth's moon. At the orphanage, I was raised on stories of the man in the moon, how he was watching over me. Your parents have grown weak, Eric. Without the energies of their home planet, Eric, they would not survive. But you, you were young. You could adapt to this new world. You could find a new source of power. They sent you to this Earth in the hope that the people of this world would care for you. And that in time, when you discovered your true power, you could show them the things they are capable of. Then why am I... Why am I like this? You were sent to Earth on the night of the crescent moon. You absorbed its image, the image of your birthplace. Your people possessed a fantastic power, Eric. But as a power, it required a source. As a child, you formed a connection with the first source of energy you found in the image of a crescent moon. A banana. The potassium of a banana forged in the crescent, resonating with your cells. They drank in its power. Your true nature, your true power has been waiting to be unlocked, Eric. All it took was the right key. You are capable of incredible feats. You can defy this Earth's gravity. You are practically invulnerable. And you possess the strength of 20 men. Do you have it? Yes, sir. Right here, sir. Good. Very good. Hey, Rit! Can't have too many people in, though. I'm sure you understand. Sometimes sacrifices have to be made in times of war. Why are we not running this story? It's important. There's evidence that the heavy mob is running this town. Maybe more than this town. What do you mean there's something more important than this? Don't be ridiculous. An entire army infantry unit would not just run away. Besides, that's international news. I'm talking local stories. We need to run this. Chief. The heavy mob we've gotten this time. CCTV footage shows Morris the Muscle kidnapping Fiona Ferns. Oh really, O'Reilly? You know where he's taken her? We know he's taken her from. We hurry, we can still catch him. Are you sure about this, Chief? Chief! I do try to remember my manners, which is why I would never hit a lady. But Maurice over here, on the other hand, is not such a gent. Now, Miss Ferns, 
I hear writing a story about me. I hope it will be extremely complimentary. I don't need to tell you what would happen if you were to start spreading nasty rumours about me. Maurice? Where's the girl? Where are you? Here. What are you? I'm Banana Man. Check this area down here. I'm just going to check the room. So. Right, please. Chief! Yes? You're going to want to see this. Man. That's what they're calling him. He was wearing a yellow cape. But seriously, Banana Man? Hey, I didn't come up with the name. That's what Eddie the Gent says he's calling himself. That's Eddie the Gent, by the way, who they've got in custody. This is it, they've got him. This is the first real hit against the heavy mob. You're surprisingly upbeat for someone who's just escaped a kidnapping. Hey, I'm safe, and it helped the police start the fight against the organised crime. The police or masked men in yellow capes? Maybe a bit of both. You wait and see. I'm going to get the scoop on Banana Man. Banana Man. Uh, hi. Um, this is my cousin Eric. Eric, Fiona, Fiona, Eric. Fiona Burns, right? I saw you on the news. Yeah, not exactly what I meant when I said I wanted to get into reporting, but it's a start, right? You okay? I mean, that whole Banana Guy story. That true. Yeah, it sure is. I was just telling Sam that I'm going to get the whole story on this guy. I'm going to show people that someone is willing to stand up to the heavy mob. Really? How are you going to track him down? Stand around the fruit and veg aisle? I'll find him and this will be the best piece of journalism this year. You'll see. You've always been so modest, Fiona. Anyway, we'd better split, so if you need me, give me a ring, yeah? Of course. See you later, Sam. Nice to meet you, Eric. Yeah, and you. Well, you certainly seem a lot chirpier today. Well, I've got to admit, the thought of Eddie the Gen behind bars didn't put a bit of a smile on my face. And, I don't know, I guess I've just been feeling more like myself again lately. That's good. Are you alright? I mean, off that guy smashed your purse the other day. Yeah, I'll live. But it means I've got nowhere to keep my cash at the moment, so I guess that means not fixed on you. O'Reilly's not budging. He's finally got Eddie locked up, and he's doing everything in his power to keep him locked up. Then you know what to do. The war has started. Send in the bombers. Yes, sir. Uh, General? Yes? What are we going to do about this banana guy? I mean, he's the reason Eddie and his enforcers are in custody. Don't worry, detective. I'm prepared for every eventuality. <laughs> direction did that come from? Is that from the police station? I, I don't know. Maybe. What do we do? do what do we do? Right, get to the bus stop. Get on the first bus out of here. I'll join you later. What about you? Eric! Where are you going? Eric! Mr O'Reilly, do we have a visual on Eddie? We cannot let him get away like this. Damn! Is Eddie secure? I don't know. We've got no visual of him. We have to assume he got away. We haven't just locked him up. Eddie's head of the heavy bomb. He has powerful friends. There must have been more than got him out. But how? Explosives must be inside the station. Maybe your department's not as clean as you thought. So now what? How am I meant to go after the heavy bomb, not even knowing who to trust? See if you call it Eddie back up from out of town. In the meantime, I'll see what I can do. How do I even know if I can trust you? Who the hell are you? A friend. An ally. Get down! What the hell? 
was that? Close by, this didn't just want to do fruit. That's something bigger going on. Bombings? Across the town. Why? Whoever's doing this is working with the heavy mob. That means they have a criminal army. Somebody's declaring war. And I'm gonna find out who. or so, yeah. Are, are you serious? I mean, you're Banana Man? Yeah, only right now I'm not doing this so good. What happened? I was behind this hit me with some sort of biological weapon, changed me back. I need to go get another banana. What are you doing here anyway? I wanted to make sure you got home alright. Eric, I'm not letting you go back out there. You're not my mother, Samantha. No, I'm your cousin, Eric, and I've always looked out for you. I'm not about to let you go out there and get yourself killed. You once told me that everyone has the ability to do great things. You told me I just need to find the right key to unlock that potential. I found that key. Bananas? All these years thinking you were allergic. Get home. Stay safe. Alive. Greetings, people of Great Britain. As those of you in Dandytown are already aware, your country is at war, and I am your enemy. My name is General Blight. Years ago, I served in this country's armed forces, and, in return, I was betrayed by my government, marked out as a war criminal. The time has come for this injustice to be avenged. This country has grown weak. You have allowed your armed forces to wither away. You've opened yourselves up to the foreign enemy. You've even gone so far as to leave yourself at the mercy of a man from another world. Under my rule, Britain will return to its rightful place as an all-powerful imperial force. My army has been readied in the shadows. You'll never see me coming. And if you're watching this banana man, don't attempt to stop me. For as we speak, I am readying missiles carrying an advanced strain of the Panama disease pathogen, a virus which is deadly to bananas. The first have already struck a dandy town. Let's see how long you last with that source of power. was a party election broadcast by the United Kingdom Independent. Those missiles haven't reached as far as the town yet. Where are we going? I am going to the Panama Missile Base, where I intend to confront Banana. You are staying put to lead your men. The heavy mob are my army now, and you are my second in command. And what of the latter missile, the one not transmitting the Banana virus? Within the hour, the strike down the I'm sorry, you specified it was to be aimed at Parliament. This country's grown weak, Eddie. Refusing to stand up for us. But it's this town, this town in particular, that's come to rely on an alien parasite, praising him as a hero. Dandy Town has suffered for its weakness. What about me? What about my men? Oh, 
hope you've done a wonderful job of distracting the police and taking control of this sordid little town. But I think, like any good captain, it's time for you to go down with the ship. Hopefully you can use it to get people out of town. Come on. Sorry sir, just following orders. You're with Blight and the Heavy Mole. You've been helping them under our noses. Why? If I didn't, they would have killed me. Besides, this town's a lost cause. You've said it so yourself. It can look bleak sometimes, but I'm not ready to give up on this town just yet. Helen Oxen, you're arrested and fired. Chief. I'm going after Blight's missile arsenal. But to get to it, I need to go through it. Think you can find him? If he's still in town, it shouldn't take long. If I can lead you to him, do you have somewhere you can hold him? The main penitentiary is just outside of town. It's still secure. Get to a patrol car. The missiles. It's not the banana seeking missiles you want to worry about. Tell me where they are. They're on a small island off the coast. Blight is heading there now. He's expecting you. No, wait. Blight stabbed us in the back. There's a second missile heading for Dandy Town. It'll level the entire town if it hits. I've been expecting you, for far longer than you might imagine. I always knew this day would come, ever since that incident at the orphanage. The orphanage? You know? I know that was where you were raised, yes. I also know that was where you first discovered your powers. Because I was there that night. I grew up in that orphanage. I saw you screaming in the night as that banana lit up with so much power. But word never got out. That's how I knew. That's how I knew that this country was keeping secrets, harboring weapons that it should have destroyed. That's why I led troops against my own government. That's why I was branded as a criminal, because I knew. I knew that the orphanage was harboring a weapon, a living weapon. I'm not a weapon. I'm trying to protect the people you're threatening to destroy. I'm trying to show them they have the potential to do so much better than giving in to this hatred you thrive on. All that power and you use it to stand in the way of true justice? That's why I had the heavy mob burn down that orphanage and hope that would wipe you out. You're a monster, Blight. I'm a revolutionary. Soon all the nations of the world will belong to me. I have soldiers everywhere waiting for my orders. A people's army ready to rise up and reclaim this nation. And it all starts with this. Say goodbye to your snivelling hometown. But how much of the Panama pathogen did you just expose yourself to? How are you feeling, Banana Man? 
a little queasy. It's over. Get up. I said get up. Goodbye, banana man. dead banana man. Lie down and accept your defeat. Oh, no, no, don't you dare, don't you dare! That's not possible! I'm not alone, Light. Never have been. Not like you. Betrayed by everyone you've ever known. Impressive! But strength always fails in the face of strategy. And that's what I've been studying all my life. For I am a soldier. I am a weapon. You've got all that. Yeah. You ah! General. The war is over, Blight. You lost. I thought I told you to go home. I prefer the park. Besides, panic's over. Apparently, Banana Man handed General Blight over to the police. Well, that was good of him. Still alive, then? Looks that way. Good. You, me, milkshakes. You're paying, and this time you can have banana. Better not. You would not believe the reaction it gives me. Besides, I've got a few things to clear up first. Chief. The station's going to need a bit of repair work, but Blight and Eddie the Jets are locked up now. You've really started something. There's hope on the streets. The people Blight had in our apartment have run out of places to hide and the heavy mob's falling to pieces without its leader. But, Blight has an army of criminals, and we're only beginning to find out them all. We've been following a scientist who helped Blight develop the Panama toxin. A doctor who goes by the name Gloom, and it looks like he's been busy. Meaning? From what we can tell, this Gloom guy, he was no stranger to the wrong side of the law. Looking at some of his accomplices, it looks like you're not the only player with a few extra chicks up his sleeve. Take this guy. Double homicide, broke into two of Britain's high security pranks, and he's got a taste for fruit, just like you. Use a calling card. I'll look into it. I never said thank you. And you'll never have to. Just... What now? What do you mean? I have... Two lives. Two sides of myself. Eric... And Banana Man. Which one do I choose? Which one is really... Me? If you want my advice, there will be times people will need Banana Man. But people will still need Eric Twinge. Continue your life at 29 Arcasia Road. You will lead a life as Eric, as a student, but no ordinary student. From now on, you will lead two lives, a double life. And when the world needs you, when Eric eats a banana, an amazing transformation will occur.
transformation from one life into the other. Eric is Banana Man. Ever alert for the call to action.
might have filmed it, I'm not sure. I'll press the button. 